I mean, you guys are having a lot of fun with that. I mean, yeah. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> I, I re-signed a blocking tight end that was on the team the right. last three years. Right. You know, I brought in a fullback, but I also traded our fullback. So yeah. uh, I, I don't know where, where we're taking that 1998 quote. <laughs> uh, but what we did in 1998 is we brought in a lot of veteran free agents at the beginning that were tough guys that were uh, leaders of their position, guys like Anthony Newman and Richard Harvey and Elijah Alexander and Eric Allen, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring in a work ethic uh, like 1998, and um, I'm excited about it. There has been a lot of talk with the, the blocking tight ends. What are your thoughts on the two? Uh, we got Jerry Cook now. He's exactly. a great receiving that's tight end. What are your thoughts on we're going to use, you know, if you watch Philadelphia play, they just won the Super Bowl. Uh, they used three tight ends a lot, and they drove defenses crazy. And sorry about that, but I like tight ends. They create a lot of unpredictability. The Kansas City Chiefs are in our division. They use three tight ends, and they drive people crazy. It's a great package to have. You can close people out in a four-minute drill, run out the clock. You can hand the ball off on the goal line. There's some great play actions, and um, I don't think I'm a heck of a lot different than Doug Peterson and Andy Reid that way. I like tight ends, and... Uh, they're hard to find nowadays because they're not being produced in college football like they once were. So sometimes you got to find them in free agency. Why aren't they being produced? Everybody's playing the spread. You know, they don't play in line very much. They're in the slot or teams are using four wide receivers and one back. So they're just not in line blockers like they used to be. There are some, but they're hard to find. Soon enough, you want to familiarize yourself with the personalities of the players in your locker room. You get to yeah. meet these guys. Be right. nice, wouldn't it? Would be nice. Yeah. Right now, you have a chance to, this is less fun, familiarize yourself with the CBA. How much of a comfort do you have with just the roles and with that a sense of how you can make the most of the time you're allotted? I'm, I'm out comfortable with it. I, I've been uh, well aware of what the rules are. I've had players come and visit me because they can't get into their own facility. So uh, the most important thing that we're going to try to do as a coaching staff is have the best meetings in football. And I think to do that, you got to prepare harder for your meetings than you ever did before. If you can have one hour, it better be three hours of content. You just can't go in there and tell stories and have a good time. And when you're on the practice field, if it's two hours or if it's an hour and 56 minutes, every second has to be allotted for. You got to move around from drill to drill. The players want that. They want, uh, I think, discipline on the field. They want organization. And uh, I think it all starts with your coaching staff. And I, unfortunately, we've hired some really good people. Coach, you've uh, been behind enemy lines the last nine years and uh, got a unique perspective with 31 other organizations. Um, what kind of advantage is that going to be the second time around in Oakland? Because if you win games, you know, it, it's been obviously eye opening to see some of the things that I've been able to see some of the frustrations that coaches have, some of the facilities that teams have put in. Um, it's been, been a great, I think, uh, tool, but it doesn't guarantee it wins. You know, it just heightens your imagination, gives you some thoughts maybe that other people don't have. I remember when I was coaching the Raiders, I always wondered what Marty Schottenheimer was saying to his team, what his facility looked like, and now I know. So uh, hopefully it'll help us in the strength and conditioning world. We can add a machine here or there. Uh, maybe we can upgrade a facility. Maybe we can put a drill in that I saw in Green Bay. Uh, knowledge is a powerful thing, and I've always tried to accumulate as much knowledge as I can, and uh, hopefully it's a tool. Well, uh, if there was uh, one tool or part of the game you could change to make it better, uh, what would it be? Uh, just try to keep the game as much the same as it has been. You know, I don't, I don't like a lot of these new rules. I don't understand them. It's getting awful technical. Uh, I'd like to eliminate instant replay, honestly. That'd be my number one thing. Yeah. Let the officials call the game, and um, that's just my opinion. I try not to play that game a wish list. You know what I mean? Right, right. You eliminating TV and having access to all those slow-mo replays. You would I think slow-mo replay is the, is the biggest problem with replay. You know, when you're looking at is it a catch or isn't it a catch at that speed, it's hard to tell. You know, it really is hard to tell. Uh, so I think if you threw that slow-mo out, 
think you'd get back to common sense. You know, let the naked eye determine some of these some of these calls. But it always looks like pass interference when you're going that slow. It always seems to look a little bit more dramatic in slow motion, and sometimes it's not realistic. I don't think. Are you encouraged that the catch rule might be improved? What's up? Hey, no. How can you improve the catch rule? I mean, you know, I don't, I don't understand. What, what, what is it? Last year was a three-step process. You know, this year I'm anxious to hear how the vote goes. You know, I've <coughs> dealt with the force out. I've, I've had to learn the three-step process. Uh, I played catch a lot in my day. I got a pretty good idea what a catch is, but I still, I, I still, I'm not quite clear on it yet. Deshaun Melvin, do you think he could be a guy that you can say that's your side of the field? Do you have that type of? I mean, we're going to see. You know, we haven't even had a practice yet. Right. I've been a head coach for 70 days. I haven't even met any of my players. I've met these free agents more than I met my guys. But if you watch Melvin play last year, it was his best season. You know, they did ask him to uh, go with a specific receiver. I saw him go with Antonio Brown at times. He played left, he played right. I've seen him go on the slot. Um, we like him. I really like our secondary coach, Derek Ansley, <clears throat> who we got from Alabama. He's a perfect guy, I think, for Gary and Conley and Rashad Melvin and hopefully some of the young secondary people that we bring in here. There have been very few people that have come into your building and not signed. Do you, do you feel like you guys had a good recruiting? When you come in, you don't get out. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the magical powers yeah. of recruiting, you know. You know, it's, it's been tough, you know, free agency. Sometimes you want to go after door number one, but you don't you don't have the you don't have the, the resources to do that. Right. And you know, we didn't feel like we needed to bring in three players. We felt like we needed to bring in a lot of players. We had a lot of needs. And uh, I think we said that in Indianapolis. Our secondary was decimated. You know, our linebacking core, we didn't have any numbers. Two of our defensive linemen were free agents. We had a lot of issues. And um, we tried to bring in a lot of players, and our success rate was pretty good when we got them in the building.